This is Dolany TV, guys. A big welcome back to some NHL 19 Edmonton Oilers franchise mode. And today we're reviewing year number three because, of course, as you saw last episode a couple days ago, we finished up year number three and we ended up finishing. If you didn't see it as I was starting my intro, let's go back a little bit 106 points, 51 wins, 27 losses, four overtime losses. That's been a thorn in our side. The entire simulation so far up to this point is every season we seem to lose way too few games in overtime and shootouts. That's okay. I'm going to be all right with that. The other playoff teams are Vegas, San Jose, and then you've got St. Louis, Dallas, Colorado, Winnipeg, and Chicago. So two Canadian teams from the Western Conference is all that make it in the Eastern Conference. Toronto, Boston, Tampa, Montreal, Buffalo. So that's a pretty good team effort there and you see Ottawa was right on the bubble as well. And then you've got Carolina, Pittsburgh, New York Rangers. So it's going to be interesting to see how everything shakes down. Carolina kind of the odds on favorite to win it this year. Columbus didn't even make it back to the playoffs. So that's the interesting thing. They did win the cup last year. Beat us in game five of the Stanley Cup final. So the only thing we really have left to do is figure out who our playoff opponent is going to be, which it should, by all means, probably be the Winnipeg Jets in the first round. That'll be really a good time to see what can happen. But first, let's go review the stats leaders. So first thing we'll go by is the goal column, which it was McDavid, Drysettel, Pugliarvi, and Eggenberger, all with 20-plus goals. Bjorkstrand, Nuge, Johansson, Kara. Yamamoto, Boquist, Krebs, Strom. That, that's your guys who scored 10 or more goals. Now, when you go into the assist category, 60 for Boquist, 41 for Nugent Hopkins, 41 for McDavid, 39, a great number for Kyler Yamamoto, but you see that it actually falls quite a bit short of what he did last season, a 74-point campaign. Last season, he had those 56 assists and was just an absolute monster. Although you got to say his shooting percentage, if it was up a bit more, would give him a couple more points, probably around 55, and we'd be talking a little bit different for Kyler Yamamoto this season. Pooley RV 38, Drysettle 36, Eggenberger 35, Johansson 33, Krebs 27, Bjorkstrand 20, and then everybody else kind of filling in there with a couple or two. Points wise, you guys already seen who the points leaders are. It's McDavid, Boquist, Drysaddle, Pugliarvi, and Nugent Hopkins. Eggenberger has a very solid season. 82 games played, 55 points. 10.5 shooting percentage. Like I said, the same thing with Yamamoto, right? If it was higher, we would be talking a very dynamic offense because if he could get it back to what it was last season in the NHL, whew, man, bam, you're talking a huge improvement. What, 2.7%? So maybe an extra three or four goals right that could help and game winning goals power play points but this is the big thing right here shorthanded goals four and points nando Eggenberger was an unreal monster you're going to see why his defense awareness is a 91 on the penalty kill right so he's absolutely beautiful out there his passing's 87 his discipline's 97 so he ain't taking no penalties Offensive awareness is 90. His shots, low 80s for accuracy, high 90s for power. This guy is an absolute monster out there on the ice, that's for sure. Now, you guys know I like to go check out the fighting majors once in a while, and you see we did not have a lot of fights, if at all. Caleb Jones came up and had two for us. What is he doing? He's wilding up there. And... Zach Hazian with the other one. So Boquist had the most giveaways out of anyone. 71 but 31 takeaways. So we weren't giving the puck up too much this season. And this is the interesting thing here. Clefbaum and Boquist. Nurse, Pollock, Bear, Jones. And then Eggenberger had 39 block shots out there on the penalty kill. So that is massive for us. So now I think it's pretty easy what we have to do. We have to go figure out who our playoff opponent is going to be. After a 4-0 win against Nashville, okay, nothing there. We'll go simulate this game against the Bakersfield Condors. And like I said, I figured it would be the Winnipeg Jets. It is indeed the Winnipeg Jets, and we lost 4-3 in overtime to the San Jose Barracuda. Ooh, 
interesting, interesting. So Winnipeg, let's go view their lines and show you what they're all about here. Try and get a scope on this team if I can. View lines, let's go do it. So what do we want? We want Winnipeg right there above Washington. So it looks like we've got this team pretty well scouted actually. Wheeler, Shifley, Line A. So they've kept this team 90% intact. Paton, Roselvik, Perot, Brennan Lemieux, Lowry, Della Rose joins the team as the only guy that we haven't seen there before, right? Morrissey Bufflin, Truba, Niku, Delzato, and Logan Stanley joins the team as well. Top four, medium D potential. You see, he's, he's a well-rounded kind of guy. Played five games for them, so either they have an injury or they send someone down. And offensively, they look very, very scary. Goaltending-wise, there they do as well. Exact Elite, 91 overall, Connor Hellebuck. He only played 22 games. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Why he would have only played 22 games and why Eric Carver... Ooh, or is this playoffs lifetime? Hold on, this might be playoffs lifetime, boys. Let's go check the starting stats. Yeah, Blake Wheeler, 22 games played. 14 assists, what? Hold on, what is going on here? This, not a lot of this makes sense. Not sure, not sure at all. 22, 22, five, okay. Not, not much makes sense, boys, but we will figure it out and we will be gold. So there we go, that is the Winnipeg Jets. Now what we need to do is view the draft class. So you guys gotta see what we're dealing with after the draft. So you see Rob McCann, Leading the way, 18 goals, 53 assists in the American League in the Central Region. Playoff stats, no data available to show. He's your number one prospect. And then you got Latinen, who's had four goals, 17 assists as a playmaking center. Ragnarsson, who's a five goal, 12 assists kind of kid. And then you've got Dwight Cox as well with six goals, 10 assists. And this is where it gets really messed up. Seth Lang. 36 goals, 59 assists in the WHL for the Everett Silver Tips. Now, this is where it gets fun. You guys seen this? Kubashev, Kubashov, Kubas, I don't even know. Kubasov is what I've been going with, and that's maybe what I should go with, is another medium franchise goaltender who will go in the first round. This guy has yet to play a game. We have no clue what he's like. He's similar to Braden Holpe and uh, look at that, weaknesses, none. This guy is an elite, elite type goaltender. And then you've got everybody else in there. You've got Harry Cam, who's by all accounts a nice gem to pick up. He's a two-way forward, medium elite potential, low first round. And then you've got Kevin Cross, Eastwood, Morozov. A couple of guys who could really come in and get the job done. See, I've got another medium elite goaltender there. So you've got four gems in this point of the draft. You've got Person, Cam, Nestorov, who's only a low or medium elite top, what, what is he, top four at this point, I think? Yeah, top four, but I think he's something a little bit different if he's that early in the draft. I'm figuring he's probably a medium elite, and we're gonna see if we can find out on Nestorov, that's for sure. So right there guys, that is what I'm going to leave you with. What I need you guys to do, this is going to be my pitch to you. I need you guys to comment. You guys have seen kind of the draft class. I'll go through the draft class a little bit more actually. I'll just go scroll down on names and if you see anyone you're interested in, comment their name down below and what position they are ranked on this so as we at least know for next episode for sure. So we're right there at the 40s or somewhere around there right now. So guys, let me know in the comments what you guys think we need to do to improve for playoffs, what we need to do to change for playoffs, and then we should be good to go on our playoff run sometime either tomorrow or Monday night as the Oilers try to win their Stanley Cup for the first time since the 90s, right? That, that, that would be the big thing. We're trying to win the first Stanley Cup in Edmonton since the 90s. Two finals appearances, one in our franchise mode and one in real life in the past couple of years, uh, not a couple of years, past 10, 15 years. 
Any which way, I'm Tyson, this is Stolen TV, guys. I will catch you in the next one.